So according to you, according to me. You need to step away from the plate, mister. We don't want another mistake. No, it's part of my shtick. Whenever some bullshit happens, everything falls. <laughs> so what do you mean when you say that there's right and wrong ways to go about cheating? Oh, we're jumping right into it. Yeah, jumping doing. right into it. No foreplay or nothing. No, I'm not even gonna put move my hand towards you. I'm not even gonna invite you for a handshake, let alone a nipple shake. I wanted a hand job. <laughs> yeah, it's rights and wrong ways to cheat. Same way there's right and wrong ways to do stuff. Okay, like the example I used when I was talking to myself and I was thinking about it, I said, I said this. Look at how they do it up in the porn ships. They make it. They make all the different little stories up in the up in the captions and stuff. But they all paid. Well, not paid, but some of them are. Most of them are actors. But like you see the porn, and you be like, oh yeah, um, the pizza man came and smashed mom or some shit like that. Oh, you know how he drills a hole in the box before he smashes mom. Yeah, but you gotta check the sausage. Make sure there's no sausage on that pizza. You feel me? But yeah, it's just like that. Your your intrusive self, the person that's in your subconscious, the person that you see that activates the dream. Usually people would have nightmares and stuff, and that's the one that's trying to send you the message. That's the reason why I just read up something that was talking about, like, um, they did a study about 5,000 different people up in the college, and most of them had bad dreams, and they was the victim of those dreams. So, like, yeah, it happens like that. It's your subconscious that has all your bad thoughts, all your intrusive thoughts, all your fantasies, all your... Dark thoughts, blah, blah, blah. Your demon time type shit. And then it's your consciousness that has all the stuff that happened to you in in the outer world. All your experiences, all your influences. You, you in that situation. Because, yeah, you today is not who you was yesterday. I was telling somebody in the car who was drinking and he was like, yeah. Yeah, we get reborn every day. And they was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that, dog. I told him, dog. Yeah. Well, going from that to that, one, one, one. the intrusive thoughts is the reason why you be attracted to porn with those motherfuckers being like, um, MILF, stepmom, cuckold, BBC. It's the dark fantasies that you don't have to live your life with, but at the same time, you know it's there. It's your guilty pleasure. Yeah, look at this up on the background. We ain't doing it because, like, this is just raw, raw balls deep type shit. So, yeah. Think about like all the planning, all the intrusive, the stuff we did before the recording and stuff. All the planning, how I got here, how you opened the door, how that dog almost bit our legs, that type of shit. Y'all don't see none of that. But that's with, with the cheating, with, with the right and wrong way of cheating. The wrong way of cheating is, yeah, being secretive, woom woom, like not telling nobody, making it secretive, and it fucks up your whole situation. Doing it the right way would be like, most people would ask their partner, and then, really, that's all it takes. But like, yeah, ask your partner. Do it in a way that's not destructive to your relationship, destructive to your per personnel. Don't fuck up your money with it. it. It's way simpler than we make it out, but everybody does the same bullshit, so it seems complicated. Same with relationships. The reason why it gets a lot more complicated, in my opinion, is because it depends, obviously, on your partner and what they define as cheating, as well as what you define as cheating. Now, I'm personally gonna say right here, I personally don't endorse cheating of any kind. I would not, like, when I go to the gym or go out to a mall or I go out with my friends or something and my wife's not around, I do go and look at girls that are around the places and everything. We all peek and everything. But I don't go out of my way to openly flirt with these females with any intention behind it, you know. Any conversations that we do happen to have with anyone in the area is purely based on just the fact that we're there, we're vibing, we're trying to be social and everything. Well, I'm not going out there seeking to fulfill something that, I, that I'm not already being fulfilled on from my wife, right? So I think that... This goes a lot deeper than just cheating, in my opinion. I think this actually goes a lot more into, like, your mental health as well as the health of the relationship. If you have very poor mental health and you're still addicted to porn, like, not in the way that Jamal described it. Like, the way that Jamal described it, maybe he sometimes watches, like, maybe once or twice a week or something. I don't fucking know. But... Used to. I don't do it no more. Yeah, so no we're, we're both porn abstinent, but... You the point, the point that he was making that I somewhat agree with is that porn brings somewhat. the fantasy 
<laughs> of how amazing it is to commit infidelity, to have the affair, to be cheating on your partner, you know? Yeah. It's, there's, there's a lot of like, drama. not just drama. It's also a matter of the fact that you know that the infidelity porn is wrong, but there's something that's just so primally exciting about, you know, thinking about the situation and living it out in your head but a lot of people don't realize that when you do live out such a situation in your head, it kind of manifests itself as you intake more and more of it. And this is why there's been such a big recent move movement about abstaining from porn websites and just like the practice of semen retention and everything. It's been a movement because people have come to realize just how addicting and how mentally scarring. scarring well, I wouldn't say scarring. It scars your brain. It makes you it it, it switches your mindset. It's Maybe damage. Yeah. Done. This is a scar. It happened. It's still there. I will they <laughs> Fuck it, I'm gonna use it as me doing it. I watched porn and it's still there. I'm telling you, I, I was voted most likely to be a porn star. We still got the career going though. <laughs> I, that's why I pretty much believe that there's not a right way to cheat, just in my personal opinion. But, you know, you and me, were pretty different on that spectrum. You know, you want to find a partner that's open to that kind of thing, I would assume. Or am I misunderstanding that? You're misunderstanding. Like, Okay, so then if your partner does not endorse you having sex with another female, then is there still a right way to cheat? Like okay. you said before, everybody got their different levels of cheating. A person could think that you talking to another girl is cheating. But then you would be like, oh, that's controlling because you don't want me to talk to no damn female. Same with the sex. Same with, like, it's different levels to this shit. If the woman's giving you all you need, like, that's the real reason why people cheat. Because they're unsatisfied. Big facts, big facts. But that goes into what I was talking to. I was talking to a group about this one. They was talking about monogamy. And I was telling them how monogamy is... A curse. I mean, it's a blessing to other people, but it's a curse around the world. Because, like, you putting all that pressure upon one person, when, like, in a rela like in a friendship, you wouldn't put all pressure upon one friend to fit all your friendship needs. But most people do because they're introverts, so, like, they have one or two friends that they're main friends, and boom, they take the role of what a group of friends would do, because, like, each friend got different things. You got a friend there for different things. Different reasons, different one well, wants. But when it's monogamous, that person has to fulfill all those roles. Otherwise, you will have dirty fantasies, wondering what happened here, what's this? Oh, I see for people doing that. Like, and like, it, I'm just saying, it's okay, because that's natural. But that's the reason why I don't like monogamy, because it just yeah, cuts but the, you off. From I that. think that the main difference here is the difference between having the fantasies and recognizing that you have the fantasies and recognizing that you're, you know, you would like it if these things did happen, but understanding that you do have this commitment that you made to another person, so you no longer can carry these fantasies out, versus the people that actually see the porn happening, and then go out and try and emulate it in real life, and then they just end up screwing everybody's life up, because they don't know how to keep their dick in their pants. <laughs> Type shit. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, that's what I was about to say, yeah, the commitment, like, you, you know you're committed to that person, that's what it is, it's a promise to, to that person. Why? I'm actually curious on why you think monogamy can be a curse. What do you mean can be, it is. I think it can be if you choose poorly. I tell you, I be talking in a wide range. Just in your case, if it's good, it's a blessing. If it's bad, it's a curse. To me. Yeah, but that's why the dating scene is here, is like around because it's a curse too. It, it doesn't matter because when it kind of does. <laughs> when you are in dating. that shit, so you have to deal with the fuckery. You have to, you have to play your role in that. Thing. That's another thing with the little alpha bullshit. When I tell niggas that they out, they want to be alphas and shit. I tell them. You do you. Just stay the fuck away from me because you don't care about Fine, me. Fine, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, don't don't think when I say it's a curse as it's completely bad because my tattoo re represents my, my curses. One represents my generational curse, my racial curse, and just life, bro. Life is a curse, bro. We gonna die. It don't matter what you do, where you be, you gonna die. 
it's roles, bro. That's all we are. We're all we're all playing in the play. And everybody has their roles. And it's the moment when somebody get out their role is when everything fucks up. And that's what I'm saying. It plays into their fantasies. Because rather they know you or not, they already made up a role in where you fit. And once you do, diverge from that role, then you're bad. And that's what I say, the curse. Same, like that's the thing, that's the thing, that's the whole thing about cheating. In monogamous, the moment you stop playing your role as wife and husband is the moment you're bad husband and wife. Let that sink in. The moment you stop playing your roles as a husband and wife is the moment that you're not a good husband and wife. But that don't mean that you're a bad person. It just means that you didn't play your role how everybody expected you to. It ultimately just comes down to poor choices on dating profiling, on marriage profiling, and people these days just lack the actual like social awareness and social skills that we would have developed like 50, 100 years ago before even radios and television existed. People were just living their lives, interacting with other people every single moment of the day. You know, we as humanity have grown under the umbrella that, you know, ape strong together. You know, <laughs> so as we like, we have been biologically engineered and wired for the last two million years of our homo sapien development to be around others and to coexist with other humans. Mm -hmm. So this whole modern society where everybody is digitized and everything is like instantaneous and everything is like dopamine filled and there's attention retraction everywhere. It's just all so much attention that the basic biology of the human brain was not wired to keep comprehend and keep up with, mm -hmm. you know? So everything happens so fast with like, even with like dating websites like fucking Tinder or Facebook dating or Instagram or whatever, you know, all these websites have instant dopamine fillers right here where you can scroll and you'll see females tip having their ass out or you'll see dudes with fucking eight packs on their abs and everything and... Yeah, yeah, like he could be an Instagram model right now. He's built way more than me, but I totally could. <laughs> I might get an OnlyFans. Stay tuned. Yeah, the whole dating pool these days has been completely fucking saturated with all kinds of bad energy. Like that's how it is, but it don't have to be that way. And that's what I'm talking. It about. don't have to be that way. And all starts with you, viewer. Yeah, only you can stop this bullshit fire. Exactly. But actually, exactly. Not even joking. Shit. All my jokes be having a, have a real ring to it. It's all a curse. Oh, y'all motherfuckers are fucking up. You even right now. Put that damn phone down. Get outside. Anyway. Right now. Like, no joke. Pause the video and get outside right now. Take a step outside and breathe for five seconds. Breathe through your nose for five seconds. Right now, pause this video. Not even joking. Pause this video. Go outside and take up two breaths. Do it! Actually, yeah. Let's go do that. One eternity later. But... <laughs> he can't keep up. He went outside. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. <laughs> I know I had to actually fucking wash my face and everything. <laughs> Just to look halfway as presentable. But yeah, like what he was saying earlier. Yeah, when you were talking about, oh, we're big, um, big ape family is good. We come together. Come together, me, you, ape family. Wait, what? I want to say, wait, what? <laughs> You're fighting me? <laughs> Do not think that I think monogamy is bad. It is a great union. It is a perfect partner plan. It is what people need to get through the world because you can't do it alone. But marriage is the only way to have somebody stay loyal because other than that legal piece of paper, ain't nothing stopping nobody. True. But that is why I see it as a curse. Because it does the same thing that media and these people out here do. There's groups. Group, 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 group. And everyone has a barrier. And we can't get together. We can't come together. We can't understand each other until these barriers are broken. And that's the reason why I see it as a curse, because it's for life. So you put yourself in a bubble, and that cuts you off from everybody. So one of the things I wanted to But how? How does that cut you off from everybody if you're in a committed relationship? Listen to, I was just about to say Cause this is another thing that I was telling Quiz and Michael before. Okay. I was telling them, like, cause you have none to, you don't understand this because it's, it's more of a hood situation. But when you with your brothers, y'all make a gang. Y'all don't have to throw up gang signs or nothing. But when you're in a group of people, you are in a gang. When it's your boys, you are in a gang. But there is literally another generational curse 
The moment a female gets involved. Oh, shit. Yeah. The moment a female gets involved, then it's a problem. It's like, it's like, you gotta, like, we're all playing GTA, but you gotta play up on the same server as everybody else. And that's why I'm saying there's a right and wrong way to do stuff because your right way will look like somebody's wrong way and somebody's wrong way will be your right way and vice versa. I fucked up, but yeah, vice versa. And that's why I say there's a right way to do everything and a wrong way to do everything. People are used to the wrong way because everybody's so detached and everybody's only caring about them. That's one of the things, like when you got two best friends and then a girl comes in between and they both like the same girl, one of them's gonna get left behind. That's true, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Yeah, so either you can tell that loser to get over it and won't, won't, but shit, like they're mad, they're hurt. So like, typically the story goes that they turn evil. They do they do something that fucks up the relationship. Won't, won't. Same deal, another situation, Two two guys. Two guys, one girl. One goes two girls, off. One cup. Oh, we'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, two guys, one girl. One go off the war. The other one, he tells him to watch after the girl oh. while he, while he's at while he's at work. The classic war story. Yeah, it looks bad on paper because like while he's off at war and then those two get close, it looks bad because you think that she's unfaithful. But if she, but if you die out there in war, would you want her to go off with a stranger or somebody that you trust? Yeah, but what about the soldiers that do come home? Then, like, I mean, that's the scenario. Yeah, you come home, then, yeah, that's when that's what I'm saying. Like, it's levels to this shit. Like, when you come home, you should be able to fucking fall back in it. But you got to understand that they had a life while you was gone. And, like, that's the perception thing. Because you perceive that you should be able to come back and everything should be the same. But when you come back, it's all different because things been changing while you've been gone. And, like, that's what I mean. It's a that's curse. That's a really, really hard pill to swallow. It's a curse. It's a curse. That's what I mean. It's, it happens. It happens. It's real. That's just how it is. But it's a curse. Like the situation looks bad and bleak and everything. But like you gotta understand, people are people. Bro. When you chilling with your boys and you in the gang and the woman comes by, one of them falls off because they gotta go follow that woman. They have to make her happy. They have to go. They have to. Yeah, they gotta go make her happy. They gotta go play their role. Otherwise, they'll be a bad boyfriend. So. Then it's down from being four to three. And then it happens again. And now it's just two of you. And then it happens again. And now you're all alone. Until it happens to you. But the point is, now all four of y'all are in your own relationships. Barrier, 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 barrier. You gotta play your roles to keep it right. So when y'all come together, y'all can come together. But it's never gonna be as close as y'all was before. And that's why I personally don't like it. But that's just me being selfish. And I, I come to terms with that. Yeah, that goes to back what I was going to say. Yeah, when preach. When you guys are... If you, do it, if you do it right, you can make an empire. All families, all families, your kids play with other ones, legacy, bloom, bloom. All y'all working together to make a perfect situation. However, because of how society is right now, it's different stipula stipulations with it. And that's the reason why I promote polygamy, because it's that same idea, but people pollute that shit. They make it seem like motherfuckers are just there just to fucking fuck. Nah, it's way more than that. It's for the support system. It's for everybody. Like, you're never alone. You always have your partner with you. It's for y'all up in that shit, but it's always a partner with you. When you off to work, another one can come pick you up. When the kids get off of, get out of school, the other one can go get them. It's a whole harmonious union as long as everyone involved is on it yeah everybody has to be that's what i mean like yeah polygamy is not for anybody that's immature people that is selfish people that can't see that, you that can't... self described selfish that's my persona but i'm not selfish that's just what i project on because yeah if i showed y'all how much love i have shit i look soft <laughs> I'm, I'm a big teddy bear i'm sweet i'm kind <laughs> but i'll fucking <laughs> I was about to say. I was gonna say. Bro, you were about to go. <laughs> you were it. about to go hard. I can tell you really had to hold back. I felt the lump form in your throat. <laughs> it was like you were trying to hold back the vomit. Like I'm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All things considered, too, it's normally better for the common person to be monogamous, anyways, because the more people that you get involved with. 
bullshit essentially the more that things are going to happen the more the higher the chance that something bad is going to happen more and the higher yeah the higher the chance that everything's going to implode and then you're left with absolutely nothing so for most people obviously monogamy is the best option because it's traditional you only have to dedicate your life to the one person which is what i personally believe in i believe that's best for overall health and stability of the family because when you think about when you bring kids into this situation, your own biological kids, you know, when you, when you involve actual kids into it, it's, you know, monogamy, obviously, it's much more stable of a household. You have the two parents that are the strongest with the kids because they birthed that kid, you know? And that's why, like, we're going to stretch into another topic here about how broken families create more broken families because if you get raised in a broken family household, you identify with that broken family about like mothers and fathers and stepfathers and stepmothers coming in and out of the household and everything. So you see that as you're growing up and then it develops into your teen and adulthood. And then you develop that deep psychological effect in you where you think that it's okay and normal, which is the worst sin about it is that people are thinking that it's normal and okay to have a broken family when it's not. It frustrates me to no end when I hear people normalize the system that has been put into place about having people come in and out of your life just all willy-nilly and, you know, people backing out of marriages and divorces are at an all-time high since the 70s and it's getting really ridiculous. No, it is frustrating because, yeah, a broken home really does affect the person in their life, but... I want to say something about that. Like, yeah, it, it affects them mentally. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, broken home is bad all the way around. So, like, it's best to, like, yeah, monogamy, that's, it's best so it's more peaceful, more organized. Only, only extraordinary people can have it the other way. They, okay, that's what I was going to say. It goes back to when you were first saying it. You remember Kevin Samuel? I... You remember how he's talking about a high profile man can have multiple partners? Yes. Compared to a lower man that might as well just have just one. Well, yes. Both. That's that's what I mean like with that part. Like yeah, monogamy is monogamy is for everybody else. But the people that's that's able to get beyond the basic human mentality and able to understand other people and able to do certain things, they can do it. But yeah, like he said, it's way better to have it like that, cause otherwise you're gonna fuck it up. Like if you you if you can't do it, if you don't know how to do it, you will fuck up. You're gonna fuck it up for everybody. And then you have nothing but yourself to fucking blame. Like the idea of how since they have all the money and they have all the resources, they have all the knowledge. Well, that's what I mean. They're high profile men. That means they have like not saying like materialistic, that shit's basic to me. I'm sorry. That physical shit is basic to me. Like Kevin Samuel said, like how the high profile man has the ability to go for poly polygamy, have have the intuition, have the knowledge, have the this ambition. Wise, the, and, you know what? Yeah, you yeah. I guess you do gotta have ambition because you gotta be able to keep up, bro. You, you, like it's the same thing as marriage, bro. You're still playing a role. I look at polygamy as like a group, as a as a friend group, a group effort, a team on a project at school. And like, yeah, you got your people that fall off and do stupid shit, but it comes with the territory. Yeah, but that brings it back to monogamy then, too, because monogamy is about keeping your territory, keeping your one wife that you have or your one husband or whatever you have, your one singular partner and keeping them all to yourself. And that's how mo most that's how most would want it anyways, because we are inherently selfish. selfish. We don't want to share our partner with someone else because then that means that that other person could bring in kids or they could bring in another person and then it just becomes super messy monogamy is just the best safest option in my opinion i will always advocate for monogamy fuck you get out of my house i do not support polygamy with the fact that polygamy at at its core is cool for people that don't mind having multiple partners but a majority of humans have evolved to just want the single partner and even if we go back like a hundred thousand years or before that, back when actual fucking cavemen and cavewoman, okay? Back when 
you know, we could die at any day, you know, when we were being hunted as, you know, prey and everything. Even back then, you still at least had some semblance of family structures, and if the husband did die, then yes, the wife will move on from there to find another husband. Another example, the Vikings. You know anything about the Vikings? The original Vikings. Yeah, I know a lot about them. Think about how much the Vikings went out to pillage villages and take away families and just loot everything around their lands and everything. They didn't give a fuck about what your family situation was, about your living conditions. They didn't care. They were coming I in want it. and they were taking it. Take the booty. Kill all the men. Take all the women. Mm hmm Probably kill all the kids. Ain't no point in raising them. That's right, right, exactly. Because they're not going to be raised into a strong Viking society. But my example that I'm trying to go with is the fact that under extreme circumstances, most often throughout history, monogamy has been practiced, but in extreme hardships where the husband passes away or the husband can't return to the wife for some reason. Yes, obviously the wife moves on with another person. Similarly, if the wife passes away and the husband is left all alone, the husband moves on. I'm okay with that. I'm okay if that, if, you know, your partner goes away or you, the divorce does like has if the divorce if you get married and then you divorce due to all the worst things in the bible and everything from actual abuse or something then you go on and find somebody that actually treats you properly cool i'm all for that i'm not saying that once you have a partner you have to stay with that partner forever life or death right so i guess what i'm getting at here is that monogamy is best practice with somebody that you can see the rest of spending the rest of your life with but don't ever become so dependent on that person for resources or friendship or, or, or intimacy or anything that if extreme circumstances and unfortunate circumstances did happen, that you would not be able to continue on without that person. Sure, you probably have a year or two of like extreme psychological distress that you would have to fight through. But at least at the end of the day, if you still had kids, you'd still be able to raise your kids. If you don't have any kids and you're still young, you can still, you like if you're 40 or under, you can still move on from that and still find some sort of a successful life in the future. You can always work around that. But monogamy is just truly beautiful when you have the one partner that you're truly dedicated to, the one partner that you can see every single day you're always in love with them. You always like see them even at their worst moments. You're still able to look at them and see how beautiful they are. Their souls are great. Their minds are great. Their health is great. And you just grow wonderfully together and you raise a beautiful little family. And I, that, I think that's a very beautiful thing to have a single family household where there's one mom, one dad, however many kids, and you all have a house and you all have a family van and everything. I, I just like the Id idyllic American lifestyle with the cute little picket fence, okay? Unlike Jamal, I'm very materialistic and everything. That's why I have these colognes over here and my whole setup and everything in my house and all the big shebang and everything. But, you know, that's just my take on monogamy. Is that it's beautiful. I think that it's very important that people practice monogamy and just growing together with one person through the rest of your life. If you all make it through all the trials and tribulations is something truly heartwarming to every person on earth. Because like he said, you get all that in a piece of cake. Like, yeah. You do get two pieces of cake if you're lucky. Yeah. All that. Like, <laughs> it ain't no extra stuff. Like, my route, it, you got to take a different way. You got to you gotta move differently. But, like, yeah, for that, that's the white picket fence. That's what the government wants you, want you to go for. To me, not saying it's bad. To me, that's just part of the programming that they started. Generations. The generational curse again. Pop right back up again. The generational curse. Yeah. Skr yeah, that's what I'm like. Alright, I'm gonna go yeah, now nah, I know all of, yeah. The generational curse just perked me back up. Now nah, I know I was gonna say. Yeah, it goes back to like you said long ago when we was running from lions and shit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. If your man die, go on, get you another man. Yeah. Yes, yes, you don't have to die alone because somebody else died before you because we didn't live long back then. Yes! But at the same time, I don't believe that you should find two or more people at the same time while they're both still alive. I know, but fuck you. But yeah, I see it. But yeah, like he said, he don't think that y'all should have two. Y'all shouldn't have two. You, you don't need two. You only one person. No, you don't need it. Fuck you. You don't need it. And most of y'all that's watching this, you probably don't need it. You need to grow. You need to figure out.
figure out what you want in life and then you can help somebody else in your life. I'm a genie, bro. I come with three wishes and then you pass the lamp on. It takes a, now stay with me now, a village. It takes a village to raise a child. They wouldn't fucking just do it with just a parent and a child because the wolf would have came through and fucking swiped one of them. Yeah, it takes a village to raise a child. Your child ain't gonna learn just from the parent. They gonna learn from who's all around. You gonna feel me? But yeah, throughout all the damn years and stuff, yeah, yeah, before religion, yeah. Yeah, they said if you want to be having a successful life, a life without the drama, a straightforward life, a life where you can have what you want, you have who you want. The kids, so the house. Well, I guess it's a boulder back in the day. Pet and dog. Yeah. Like, I'm totally with you. Yes. It is perfect and better to be monogamous. Because you only have one person to make happy. Feed my ego more. Your children. Then you have your children. And everything is yours and territorial. But that's the part of the alpha that I can't relate with. Because, yeah, if you're selfish, you're a liability to me. It's just that simple. If you're a selfish person, I mean, everybody's selfish, but you're a liability to me. So that means, like, with my little Actually, polygamy on situation, it's not for anybody to join. It's not for everybody to join. I may like you, but it don't mean that you should join or nothing. It don't mean that you should be part of it, because it's really for certain people. That's the reason why you said that one guy that was by and his daughter, I was like, ooh, that seemed like a family I could chill with, because it's just their vibe. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a hippie at heart, bro. I'm a native, and then I'm a hippie at heart. But yeah, it goes into raising a kid, though. Yeah, everybody. Just because it takes a village to raise a kid doesn't mean that you need to own the village to raise the kids. Yeah, you just need to be in the village. Exactly. You could be with other monogamous parents. Or y'all could solve even the whole fuck. No, exactly. Because then that means that you take ownership of the village, which means that you contradict yourself. Because you don't want selfish people. And taking control of a whole village is selfish. That's why you fuck with the Vikings. You don't gotta take it. Like, that's another thing. That's the alpha curse. <laughs> the, the alpha <laughs> curse. You don't gotta have control in every situation. You just have to. So, Get along I guess with it's other people. Yeah, the race for kids. But yeah, it makes it makes the, like that's the part of harmonious balance. But let me yeah, let me go to the dark side. Let me switch over to the dark side. Oh my god. So I would start soft. So I think anime style. But yeah. It's the, it's the power and the weakness. It's those two that come together to make a strong chain. And then Polarity. Make, huh? Polarity. Yeah, the polarity. Make a strong chain and you make the children and then they branch off and do the same. But yeah, that's the reason why I don't like it. Because that means you, you stuck, you, you in a row. That's the curse. You in a role, bro. You got to play your role. You got to be the dumb or you got to be the submissive one. I, I'm a switch, bro. Whatever fuck I feel like in that moment, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be dumb if I want to be dumb. But I'm going to be sweet and submissive if I want to be sweet and submissive. But it all depends on how you make me feel. Jeez! Otherwise, we can't raise the kids. So you think that personality is just something you can switch on and off like a light switch? I can. When you're moving around and around, you got me in a tight grip. Oh, I know. <laughs> Matt, actually... Damn, it is so much to talk about. I know, but we're going to have to cut yeah. it here because this has already been like an hour-long talk some recorded. shit at the gym. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We're going to keep like fucking... Like, before that go, I want to go back to the lions. Yeah, like they said, the pride lands. The pride lands. The, the, the guy come around. The, there's a guy, and then another guy come around. He moves him out of the way, and then the kids get slaughtered. But it's other times when there's been a group of... There, there's been a pride of like I was about to say a pride of lions. So the pride is the lions. But yeah, the, it's, it, it makes it stronger when it was like two or three male lions in a pride with nine lionesses and shit. Couldn't nobody come take it. Who the fuck gonna beat three lions? You gotta bring three lions to come fight another three lions. Nigga, what is it? Who will beat three lions? Mm -hmm. The sun. Because the sun beats a million, billion lions. One billion lions versus the sun, and the sun still wins. Unless they attack at night. <laughs> okay, yeah, that means that's gonna be enough for this episode. Stay loose. Stay loose, stay smooth. And if you're interested in us reacting to Jubilee's video, check out this video up here or in the description below. Be sure to stick around for more video content like this in the future, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care of yourself, bro.